Two of the hidden tools in my shop are spray adhesive and double stick tape, and I find dozens of uses for them every day. One of the main uses for spray adhesive is to affix patterns like this onto my projects. I like it because I can spray it on and it affixes almost immediately without making the paper soggy. I want a strong bond, but I don't want something too strong. I want to be able to reposition it, and spray adhesives works well for that. And the nice part is that after I'm done with my cuts, I can use mineral spirits. It dissolves the adhesive underneath and peels it away right away. It's real easy to use. Let me kind of clear the area here and show you a little bit about how to use spray adhesives and how well they work. Now I've spread some builder's paper on the top of this workbench to protect the surface. You could use newspaper, you could use a cardboard box on its side, but I want to show you how to use this spray adhesive and how quickly this works. I normally will try and trim this pattern just a little bit first, especially on any edges that can be made square. And I'll just use a straight edge and a razor knife to do that. It makes it a little bit easier to position on the stock. So now, a good shake of the can. I don't want an awful lot of adhesive on here. I want a light spray. If I'd like something that's easy to remove and easy to reposition, just a single spray works real well. If you want something a little bit more permanent, spray it with a slightly heavier coat and let it sit for a minute or two. The bond will be a little bit more secure. So just a quick, easy spray here. And using my one straight edge. I can now line it up. And you can see the paper will still come off for a minute. It's not the bond hasn't set yet. And that's exactly what I want. So I can reposition it. But now we're ready. We'll take it to the saw and cut these out. Then I'll show you how easy it is to get that paper off of there when we're done. So once you've made your cuts and all your sanding, this paper would have been a little bit tough to get off of here without leaving some debris on it. So it's really easy to use a little bit of mineral spirits. That will soak through the pattern and help dissolve the adhesive underneath. So this pattern comes right off and looks perfect. Nice and easy, quick, and it doesn't affect any of the finish underneath. This method works really well. I would suggest you use it. Double-sided tape, on the other hand, provides a much stickier bond, and it can be used for dozens of operations around your shop. I like it in particular to adhere these patterns to wood when I go to do pattern routing on the router table. When I'm on the router table and I'm using small little piece of wood and I want to keep my hands away from the bit, a couple of pieces of double stick tape on a handle like this will work real well up against that bit. If I'm doing multiple pieces of material, I want to machine them all at one time, double stick tape will hold them all together and keep them aligned for a perfect fit and multiple identical pieces. And finally, at least in this case, putting double stick tape on some sacrificial material for use on a table saw or a miter saw works really well too. The two types of these, the paper back and the cloth back tapes, work about the same way but they're different in the consistency. The cloth back tape has a much stickier bond, probably the most aggressive of, of the two of these. And it's actually a cloth or fiber type material. You can find this at the big box stores and in hardware stores. I use it especially when I'm putting templates like this or patterns down on wood. What I'm gonna do is put a couple of pieces on here. I'll rough cut this on the bandsaw and show you how well that tape will stick when we're using routing operations, because I'll pattern route this. Um, this is a template for a leg, and it's gonna be one of four legs, of course, on a table. And what I want to do is use that same pattern to create all four legs. And by putting double stick tape on there and then using a pattern bit on the router, you'll see how well that works. In this case, the double-sided tape I'm going to use is the cloth back tape. You really can't tear it. So you'll need a scissors or a razor knife. And one suggestion I'll have with this is not to use too much of it. Again, it's extremely aggressive. And if you put this on the full length of this particular project, you'll find that you won't even be able to get it off at the end. 
So these three pieces are more than enough. And I'll remove the backer. And affix it to this piece of maple I have lying here. Again, once it's attached, it's extremely sticky, and it is not coming off of there. And the first step is to take it to the bandsaw. You can use a bandsaw to cut slightly proud of this pattern. And then following the bandsaw, we'll take it over to the router and use what's called a pattern bit to clean up that edge to match exactly this pattern. Okay, and here's how well that tape held. It's got a very good grip on here, made for a very nice clean cut on the router table. And I know that now I'll have all four legs exactly the same. Just as a quick tip, make five. Just in case something happens with one of them, you'll have another one. Uh, I mentioned at the outset too, that this tape is on here pretty well. And it can take a bit to get it off. Uh, I can get it started here and I finally have gotten just enough to get it moving. But you can tell it had I had too much on there, I'd never have been able to remove it. If you find your pieces are fairly small or you're beginning to almost feel like you're going to break that template, a little bit of mineral spirits just drizzled on the edges where that tape is will soak down inside there, slowly dissolve some of the adhesive, and this will pull off a lot easier. The idea is double stick tape, especially the cloth back tape, holds extremely well, works very well when you want to create pattern pieces. Second type of tape is paperback tape. It's a little bit different than you saw before. What we're looking at here, a couple different widths, is the tape itself is backed by paper. It's easily terrible. The adhesive on here is aggressive, though not quite as aggressive as the cloth back tape. I like to use this especially when I'm using sacrificial fences on a table saw or a miter saw. This spread across the back of these and just torn to size works really well and of course the back is peeled off the same way we did with the cloth back tape and this isn't quite as aggressive as the cloth back tape but you'll find it works really well and the grip actually gets a little bit better and a little bit tighter the more pressure you put on that tape the other difference between these two tapes is the expense cloth back tape relatively speaking is pretty reasonable a fairly large roll will cost six or seven dollars we're talking about paperback tape between a one inch roll and a two inch roll, 35 yards of it will cost between 20 and $35. So there is a difference in cost. Paperback tape though works very well, especially in smaller applications between smaller pieces, and it's much easier to get apart. If I were using very small, almost veneer-like pieces, I would definitely use paperback tape. Works much better than the cloth back tape.